Hello, this is Captain Chaudhary. I have uh, talked to you about the celestial sphere and relevant terms. I'm going to introduce to you a few calculations which are based on observer's rational horizon drawing. Let's understand the observer's rational horizon drawing as a very, very simple science. We don't have to worry that if we don't know the entire astronomy, we will not be able to do the calculations. So while you are attending my class in respect of uh, these astronomical calculations, in respect of observer's rational horizon, let us make the things very, very simple. Let's look at the data in a very simple way and let's find out the result in a very simplified way. So let us say the question is the observer's latitude is 30 degrees north and declination is 20 degrees north and you may be asked find the altitude when body is crossing observer's prime vertical. That is the question. Let's make it very simple. Latitude 30 degrees north. Declination 20 degrees north, find the altitude of the body as it crosses observer's prime vertical. When I explain you this numerical, you don't have to worry that you don't know the fundamentals and the definitions, etc. I'm trying to explain you how to approach this numerical and I'm also going to introduce to you the Napier's calculations. So to draw the observer's rational horizon diagram, let's draw a circle. Divide it in four parts. We will write down V, north south, and this is observer zenith. Of course, for all the nautical observations, we assume that we are looking at the heavenly bodies from the center of the earth, that means the core center of the earth, assuming the earth to be a transparent globe, right? From that center of the earth, we are looking at everything in the universe. But to understand this calculation, let us assume that what we have drawn is not a circle. It is like a dome with Z as the highest point and the entire observer's rational horizon line as ground zero, level zero, right? So this is a zero altitude line or circle and this is 90 degrees altitude. That means from here to here, the change of altitude is by 90 degrees. After having drawn the circle and dividing it in four parts, let me put the equinoctial 30 degrees to the south of observer's zenith. The rule is when we are drawing the observer's rational horizon for the observer in 30 degrees north, the equinoctial will appear to 30 degrees south. The reason for that is we are trying to look at the observer. An observer should be in the center of picture and the observer being in 30 degrees north latitude, if the observer should be in the center of the picture, the equinoctial should go 30 degrees south. So what I do is I divide this in nine parts. And 10, 20, 30, I will draw the equinoctial like this. Declination 20 degrees north. Basically, if we want to know at what point the body would rise, I have to use the amplitude formula that is sin amplitude is equal to sin declination upon cos L. That means sin 20 upon cos 30. So sin 20 cos 30 degree equal to shift sin 29.3 degrees. Amplitude is 29.3 degrees. So uh, the angle from the center as 29.3 degrees. I find the position here and similar position on the west side is over here. Now this particular angle is 29.3 which is the amplitude and this angle is also amplitude 29.3 degrees. But because the declination is 20 degrees north, declination is measured from the equinoctial and on the meridian. Declination is measured from the equinoctial and on the meridian. That means from here 20 degrees upwards is this position. Now I need to draw a circle which passes through these three points. And that can be drawn like this. This is the point at which and this is the point at which the body in her daily path is crossing the observer's prime vertical. Equinoctial is 30 degrees south of observer zenith. Pole also should come down 
by 30 degrees from the normal position. Right? So this is not celestial pole. And while the body is crossing observer's prime vertical, this is the meridian passing through the body. And when the body is at observer's prime vertical, the angle Z is 90 degrees. So this is the diagram you have to understand till now, right? And if you have understood the diagram, you should be able to do the numerical. Now we have already identified right angle triangle in this particular diagram, that is PZX. Now what is asked is find the altitude. Altitude means the distance from the horizon. This is what is required. But in this PZX triangle, if we can find out this as true zenith distance, if we can find out in this triangle, or in this triangle, if we can find out ZX, 90 minus ZX will be the answer. Now how to find out ZX in this triangle? We make a Napier circle. In the Napier circle, what we must do is whatever is 90, you must write down on top. So Z is 90. This is how we make Napier's circle. I write 90 minus here. So in these three particular segments, the value will be 90 minus and in these segments, the value will be as it is. This is what is Napier's circle. Now remember, in any uh, spherical triangle, there are three angles and three sides. Angles have got sides as their neighbors and sides have got angles as their neighbors. I don't have to look at the PZX triangle. If somebody asks me who's the neighbor of P, I will say PZ and PX. Who's the neighbor of X? PX and ZX. Who's the neighbor of PZ? P and Z. So I don't have to look at the triangle. So what I've done is I've written Z here. So who's the neighbor of Z? PZ and ZX. Who's the neighbor of PZ? Z and P. Who's the neighbor of ZX? Z and X. What is remaining? PX. Now, I know the latitude as 30 degrees, so I know PZ also as 60 degrees. Similarly, I know the declination as 20 degrees, so I know PX as 70 degrees. So in this particular circle, I know PZ, I know PX, and I have to find out what is ZX. So I look at this Napier circle, I find one, two, three items are the items of my concern. The two are opposite to this third item. So I will apply the second rule of Napier. That is sine of middle part is equal to cos opposite into cos opposite. That means sine of 90 minus Px is equal to cos pz cos zx therefore cos zx is equal to sin 90 minus px is cos px upon cos pz that means cos 70 upon cos 60 degrees so uh, cos 70 degrees divided by cos 60 degrees equal to shift cos that gives me 46.8 degrees. So I get the true zenith distance as 46.8 degrees.